Volcanoes, earthquakes, strange Victorians. Good day, and welcome to Australasian Hazards with Kylie. In this programme, I hope to give you, the viewer, a guide to the hazards of Australasia, the causes of these, and the social, economic, and environmental impacts. Australasia is located to the southeast of Asia, in between two major bodies of water, the Pacific and Indian Oceans. It is predominantly small islands which are sparsely populated, however quite densely packed in some of the major urban areas, such as Jakarta in Indonesia. Many islands in the east of Australasia run along a fault line known as the Pacific Ring of Fire. The Pacific Ring of Fire is an area of frequent seismic activity that encircles the Pacific Basin. The Pacific Ring of Fire is a 40,000 km horseshoe of almost constant oceanic trenches, volcanic belts and plate movements. The Pacific Ring of Fire has 254 active volcanoes and accounts for over 75% of the world's seismic activity. It is sometimes known as the Circum Pacific Belt. 90% of all earthquakes in the world and 80% of the most major ones occur along the fault line. The Pacific Ring of Fire is a direct result of tectonic movements and the movement of crustal plates. To the south, it's more complicated, with lots of small tectonic plates colliding with the Pacific Plate. This causes major seismic activity along the Mariana Islands, Indonesia, New Zealand and Tonga. We will be focusing on these areas in today's programme. However, there are many more hazards than geophysical ones, such as earthquakes and volcanoes. Another type of natural hazard in Australasia is one of a hydrometeorological nature. Tropical cyclones, or as they're known in Australia, willy willies. Tropical cyclones are some of the most feared natural hazards to hit to Australasia. They are characterised by low pressure systems and bouts of strong winds and flooding rain. Tropical cyclones feed on the warmth created when moist air rises over large open bodies of warm water. They usually lose their strength if they move over land. This is why coastal regions often suffer severe damage, but inland regions are often protected from the strong winds. The term tropical refers both to the geographic location that these storms are created in the tropical regions of the world and also to the maritime tropical areas in which they come from. The term cyclone refers to the cyclonic nature of the storm, which here in the southern hemisphere rotates in a clockwise direction. As well as producing high winds and torrential downpours of rain, tropical cyclones are also capable of spawning tornadoes, creating massive storm surges and creating high waves. Storm surges can create extensive flooding for up to 40 kilometres from the coastline. Tropical cyclones are created when disturbances in the atmosphere are favourable. Tropical storms are moved by winds in the Earth's troposphere. When conditions are favourable, the storms intensify and may even develop an eye. On the other end of the spectrum, if conditions deteriorate or the storm makes landfall, then the system will weaken and eventually dissipate. The worst ever cyclone related disaster to hit Australia occurred in March 1899. It was called the Bathurst Bay Hurricane and killed over 300 people. Bathurst Bay is located in northern Australia on Cape York. At the time of the hurricane an entire pearling fleet was anchored in the bay. Within an hour almost all the ships had been sunk, driven ashore or drifted onto the Great Barrier Reef. <laughs> Only four survived and over 300 died. To the north, just before the eye of the storm passed inland, a massive tidal wave reaching up to 13 metres was reported, which took out the entirety of Bathurst Bay, the Pearling Fleet, and almost 15 kilometres inland. An eyewitness, Constable J.M. Kenny, has been brought forward in time to speak with us today. A 48 foot storm surge that swept over the cap of Barrow Point, atop a 40 foot high ridge, and reached three miles inland. The largest storm surge I've ever seen. The Willy Willy continues southwest over Cape York, Venezuela, emerging over the Gulf of Carpentaria before doubling back and dissipating over four days later. Over 100 indigenous Australian people died, including some who were caught by the backsurge and swept across the sea, or trying to help shipwrecked men. 
My friends! Thousands of fish and some sharks and dolphins are found 15 metres above sea level, up to several kilometres inland, and rocks are embedded in trees. I found dolphins 15.2 metres up above the cliffs of Finland's Island. It was a terrible time. A memorial to the Pearls was erected on Cape Melville. It is also remembered in the Anglican Church on Thursday Island. Although they can be devastating to human populations, the cyclones also have the benefit of transferring water to drought-ridden areas. They also transfer warmth and energy away from the tropics into more temperate latitudes, making them an important part of the global temperature mechanism. Thanks to the watchful eyes of satellites and enhanced warning and communications technology, the risk of death in Australia is now a lot lower. Damn! Another common hazard in Australia is the highly destructive bushfire. A bushfire is, well, a fire that happens in the bush. Talk about pointing out the obvious. But to the Australians, the bush represents a vast array of grassland, woodland and scrubs. There are many factors that affect bushfires. Fuel, anything that burns lying around the ground will burn and cause the fire to spread. Weather is a major contributor to large bushfires. The hotter and drier it is, the more likely for it is for a bushfire to start and spread uncontrollably. Bushfire behaviour is heavily influenced by the topography of an area. A fire spreads generally faster uphill and conversely slower when going downhill. The fire pushes away the superheated air in front of it, drying and warming the fuel for ignition. When a fire going downhill meets the flat, the flames may quadruple and then quadruple again when it hits the undulating hill on the other side. In 1964, bushfires ripped through Western Australia. The area in and around Dwelling Up was just devastated. The towns of Dwelling Up and Caradale were almost completely destroyed, as were up to 50 sawmills nearby that had fallen into disuse in the past 50 years. The cause of these fires was centred around a high pressure system in the east. A cyclone blowing in brought hot winds from the tropics. This led to consistent temperatures above 40 degrees. As the normal warm summer temperatures dried the area, another cyclone hit Onslow, causing devastation around. As the cyclone did not bring any wind, having moved inland and at low intensity, it reignited previous bushfires. 